Lee, you know, it's just obvious. I want to check out actually the debate, the uh, JD Vance Walls debate on Israel. And let's see if I could pull this up. Um, I don't know if it will show. But I might be able to find the timestamps. Hold on. All right, here we go. Hey, I'm Kevin, and I'm one of the co-founders of Emmy, and we make the world's first healthy instant ramen. I started this business this is them responding to, to Iranian attack. I, with the Middle East, Margaret. Thank you, Nora. Earlier today, Iran launched its largest attack yet on Israel, but that attack failed. For context, this is the vice presidential debate um, that the actually I think the only one that they'll do. Tim Walls, uh, Democrat who is very in with the squad versus J.D. Vance. And right now they're talking about the Israel-Iran um, sort of breakdown and how that uh, ended up. Thanks to joint U.S. and Israeli defensive action. President specifically, sorry, specifically they're talking about the Iranian attack that happened earlier today. 180 um, missiles launched from Iran towards Israel, and they're responding to that. Biden has deployed more than 40,000 U.S. military personnel and assets to that region over the past year to try to prevent a regional war. Iran is weakened, but the U.S. still considers it the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world, and it has drastically reduced the time it would take to develop a nuclear weapon. It is down now to one or two weeks' time. Governor Walls, if you were the final voice in the Situation Room, would you support or oppose a preemptive strike by Israel on Iran? You have two minutes. Well, thank you, and thank you for those joining at home tonight. Uh, let's keep in mind where this started. October 7th, Hamas terrorists uh, massacred over 1,400 Israelis and took prisoners. Uh, Iran, or I, uh, Israel's ability. <laughs> That's a Biden moment right there. To be able to defend itself is absolutely fundamental. Getting its uh, hostages back, fundamental. And ending the humanitarian crisis in. Watch what he says in a minute. He's going he's gonna to make a little bit of a mistake. Another Biden moment. Gaza. But the expansion of Israel and its proxies is Pro an. Proxies. Proxies. Israel and its proxies. Does Israel have proxies? No, I think that was Iran with the proxies. And so he mixed up Israel and Iran. Absolute <clears throat> fundamental uh, necessity for the United States to have the steady leadership there. You saw it experienced today where along with our uh, Israeli partners and our coalition able to stop the incoming uh, attack. But what's fundamental here is <clears throat> that steady leadership is going to matter. It's clear and the world saw it on that debate stage a few weeks ago a nearly 80-year-old Donald Trump talking about crowd sizes is not what we need in this moment. But it's not just that. It's those that were closest to Donald Trump that understand how dangerous he is when the world is this dangerous. His chief of staff, John Kelly, said that he was the most flawed human being he'd ever met. And both of his secretaries of defense and his national security advisors said he should be nowhere near the White House. Now, the person closest to them the, to the Donald Trump said he's unfit for the highest office. That was Senator Vance. What we've seen out of Vice President Harris is this is this is so funny because it's just Trump is evil. Trump is evil. Trump is evil. Not addressing any of the root of the issues. The world is dangerous. Trump is evil. We've seen steady leadership. We've seen a calmness that is able to be able to draw on the coalitions to bring them together. Understanding Kamala Harris has done nothing and accomplished nothing that our allies matter. When our allies see Donald Trump turn towards Vladimir Putin, turn towards uh, North Korea, when we start to see that type of fickleness around holding the coalitions together, we will stay committed. And as the vice president said today is, we will protect our forces and our allied forces, and there will be consequences. Governor, your time is up. Senator Vance, the same question. Would you support or oppose a preemptive strike by Israel on Iran? You have two minutes. Watch him absolutely 
eviscerate Tim Walz. Hey, Margaret, I want to answer the question. First of all, thanks, Governor. Thanks to CBS for hosting the debate. And thanks, most importantly, to the American people who are watching this evening and caring enough about this country to pay attention to this vice presidential debate. I want to answer the question, but I want to actually give an introduction to myself a little bit because I recognize a lot of Americans don't know who either one of us are. I was raised in a working class family. My mother required food assistance for periods of her life. My grandmother required social security help to raise me. And she raised me in part because my own mother struggled with addiction for a big chunk of my early life. I went to college on the GI Bill after I enlisted in the Marine Corps. All right. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Sorry to say. Hold on. I want to try to convince you tonight over the next 90 minutes that if we get better leadership in the White House, if we get Donald Trump back in the White House, the American dream is going to be attainable once again. Now, to answer this particular question, we have to remember that as much as Governor Waltz just accused Donald Trump of being an agent of chaos, Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. People were afraid of stepping out of line. Iran, which launched this attack, has received over $100 billion in unfrozen assets thanks to the Kamala Harris administration. What do they use that money for? They use it to buy weapons that they're now launching against our allies and, God forbid, potentially launching against the United States as well. Donald Trump recognized that for people to, to fear the United States, you needed peace through strength. They needed to recognize that if they got out of line, the United States global leadership would put stability and peace back in the world. Now, you asked about a preemptive strike, Margaret, and I want to answer the question. Look, it is up to Israel what they think they need to do to keep their country safe, and we should support our allies wherever they are when they're fighting the bad guys. I think that's the right approach to take with the Israel question. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Governor Walls, do you care to respond to any of the allegations? Well, look, Donald Trump was in office. We'll sometimes hear a revisionist history, but when Donald Trump was in office, it was Donald Trump who we had a coalition of nations that had boxed Iran's nuclear program in, the inability to advance it. Donald Trump pulled that program. Oh, no, 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 no. When you want to talk about revisionist history, um, Donald Trump bankrupted Iran. It had no money for any of this. Why do you think they didn't do shit? They didn't do shit for four years because they knew that Trump was in office and because he, they, he killed, he killed Qasem Soleimani and he was playing hardball with Iran all the way. Terrible, terrible tariffs he laid on them. I mean, good for us, but I'm saying good tariffs, but terrible for them. Um, and they were bankrupted. They were over. They had no money to fund the Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, all over the place. And then they come in and they lift the sanctions and voila, October 7th. What do you think happens? Um, and put nothing else in its place. So Iran is closer to a nuclear weapon than they were before because of Donald Trump's fickle leadership. And when Iran shot down an American aircraft in international airspace, Donald Trump tweeted because that's the standard diplomacy of Donald Trump. And when Iranian missiles did fall near U.S. troops and they received traumatic brain injuries, Donald Trump wrote it off as headaches. Look, our allies understand that Don oh my god okay let's, let's let's skip to where and president trump did exit that deal he recently said just five days ago the u.s must now make a diplomatic deal with iran because the consequences are impossible did he make a mistake you have one minute well, first of all, Margaret, diplomacy is not a dirty word, but I think that's something that Governor Waltz just said is quite extraordinary. You yourself just said Iran is as close to a nuclear weapon today as they have ever been. And Governor Waltz, you blame Donald Trump. Who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not mine. Donald Trump consistently made the world more secure. Now, we talk about what the, the, the sequence of events that led us to where we are right now, and you can't ignore October the 7th, which I appreciate Governor Waltz bringing up. But when did Iran and Hamas and their proxies attack Israel? It was during the administration of Kamala Harris. So Governor Waltz can criticize Donald Trump's tweets, but effective, smart diplomacy and peace through strength is how you bring stability back to a very broken world. Donald Trump has already done it once before. Ask yourself at home, when when was the last time, I'm 40 years old, when was the last time that an American president didn't have a major conflict breakout? The only answer is during the four years that Donald Trump was president. Yep, yep, uh, Obama had it. You had, uh, you know, everyone had it. Everyone had it except for Donald Trump. 
Um, and that's because he employed peace through strength. And nobody wanted to mess with him. Nobody wanted to screw with him, um, w w which sort of makes sense uh, because he is a little bit of a scary guy to mess around Where with. I grew up. Um, debate immigration. I wanted to see if they talked about Israel-Palestine. I'm not sure that they did. Um, I'm going to share this tab instead. Go to X and look up J.D. Vance. Israel. Hold on. Um, VP debate remarkably started with Israel and not the victims of Hurricane Eileen. Okay, people are saying are angry. Um, peace through threat. Okay, that was, I think, the only, only time. But again, uh, let's remember what he said specifically. He said, um, you know, we will support our allies and our allies can make the decision for themselves whether they want to, whatever they want to do in their dealing with the bad guys. And the bad guys are the jihadists, are the uh, terrorist regimes, and um, Walls will never say that. Walls will always have a qualifier. Israel has a right to defend itself, but they can't do this. Israel has a right to defend itself, but they're killing too many Gazans. Israel has a right to defend itself, but it also matters how it does defend itself, as Kamala Harris infamously has said multiple times already. So they can defend themselves, but we will intervene if they we think they went too far. On the other hand, Trump and Vance are much more do what you want. You know, we're uh, we're on the outside. We'll support you. Not necessarily will we get thick in the weeds. But, um, you know, we're not interested in, in policing you. And, uh, you know, we don't really care for the terrorists like Harris and Walls do because the terrorist side of their party, the squad, as well as others, are pressuring them to care for um, anti-Israel, uh, you know, terrorists and jihadists that want the total annihilation of the state of Israel. For more, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help us make more of these videos, you can actually join the channel memberships that we just recently launched. Um, Jewish Uncensored is a movement to not only fight anti-Semitism, but more so make sure that never again um, is a real promise and not, a, um, not something that is fickle. And, uh, yep. So that's what we do over here at Jewish and Censored. I would uh, check us out on social media as well. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, X, uh, and all over the place. Shalom and uh, prayers for Israel as they're dealing with Iran's uh, terror proxies, Seven Front War. And uh, hopefully Israel will respond in a very strong way. Preemptive strike. I, I don't know why they're calling it a preemptive strike because Iran attacked. So... Um, Israel should uh, respond very, very strong.